All right, so I ask you to ponder the two scenarios with Mozart and the Ravens here and think about whether or not they're positive or negative externalities. So the first one is that Mr. Sutton uh, plays Mozart for his students um, during class, let's say. And Mozart is found by studies to improve academic achievement. So what type of externality do we have here? Well, the question is, um, who pays the cost for the Mozart? Well, who takes the time to get the music? Who takes the time to play the music? Who sets up the speakers and the computer and everything you need to hear the music before class starts? That would be Mr. Sutton. Now, the students, you guys, do you do anything to contribute to the playing of the Mozart? No. You do jack squat. Not nothing. So you don't pay a single cost. Yet, what is true about the benefit that you receive? Well, it makes you do better in school, uh, so you get a benefit out of this that you paid no cost for. You did nothing out of your ordinary behavior uh, to get this benefit. You showed up. You should thank Mr. Sutton for such a benefit. This is amazing. So this is a great example of a positive externality. You guys benefited while I paid all the cost. Now, uh, that's not to say that Mr. Sutton didn't get some benefit. I certainly like to see my students do well, and perhaps I enjoy Mozart. It's not really my favorite, but let's pretend I do. Um, so, just because you got a benefit doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't. It's just that I got a benefit while paying a cost. You got a benefit not paying a cost. So, that is a positive externality. Now, down here, the Ravens, uh, 15 years ago, they moved to Baltimore. And this is a little trickier, because you got to think about, okay, well, what goes along with the Ravens? Like, who benefits uh, from the Ravens? That might be a good uh, question to ask here. Or maybe we could start with who, who pays the cost of the Ravens coming to town. Um, because we, that's how we started up here. We started with Mr. Sutton paying for the videos and stuff, or the, the music. So who pays for the Ravens to show up to town? The Ravens organization, the owner of the Ravens. Um, they pay all those costs for bringing the Ravens uh, from Cleveland to uh, Baltimore. And so they did that. Uh, the Ravens organization pays all the players. The Ravens organization pays to put on the games, pays for all the people at the stadium that have to work. Uh, and who gets the benefit? Well, the, the owner of the Ravens, Steve, Steve Biscotti, he makes a, a significant sum of money and and he's the owner of a really cool product, so he certainly gets a benefit, no question there. Uh, but what about everybody else? Does anybody else get a benefit from the Ravens? Sure. Mr. Sutton, I'm not even a Ravens fan, and I like the Ravens. And, I, and that's great because it's you know I like the sense of camaraderie and community that the Ravens bring. Um, but I don't pay any of those costs about putting on football games. And let's take it a step further. Let's think about who's downtown. Let's think about where the stadium is, what happens on game day. Uh, for those of you who have been down there, uh, you may notice that in the close proximity of the stadiums, there are a lot of businesses, there are hotels, there are restaurants, there are bars. And think about those places on a game day, all because the Ravens are in town. What happens? They get a boatload of people down there simply because the Ravens are in town. Does that business owner pay any cost for putting on the football game or hosting or, or having a football team? No. No. So in this sense, it certainly looks like this would be a positive externality uh, because the Ravens bolster business. I like the word bolster. That's why I used it there. Um, and, you know, you could go on and you say, hey, it builds a sense of community. And maybe the sense of community makes people less likely to commit crime. You go on and on and on and say that there's lots and lots of benefits to the Ravens being here. But then somebody, a, a savvy student might say, wait a second, Mr. Sutton, hold your horses. Because I know what people do. I've been down to a Ravens game and I've seen it with my eyes. People get down there, they start acting all sorts of foolish generally because they've been drinking a bit too much and they do stupid things they get in fights 
they swear, they curse, they tip over parked cars, they do all sorts of silly things down there at the football game. And so I wouldn't deny this. Uh, and so in a sense, this may be a negative externality, that these people are, are in, imposing costs on other people who have nothing to do with the game, that they, they could care less about the Ravens, you know? Um, if you're a person that hates football, doesn't care about the Ravens, and you're walking downtown and somebody has toppled your car over because they were drunk at the football game, you paid a serious cost and you got no benefit. Or if you got beat up by some unruly fan and you had nothing to do with that game, uh, that would be a negative externality. On the whole, professional sports teams tend to be considered positive externalities um, because uh, they bring in lots and lots of positive activity. Uh, a lot of economic activity. They bring in a sense of camaraderie, which I talked about, a sense of community. And so big cities like to have uh, professional sporting teams, not just football teams, baseball teams, basketball teams, hockey teams, uh, for all of these reasons that we just talked about. Okay? So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a way to contextualize the difference between a, a positive and a negative externality. So what better way to test you than to see if you can think about these things uh, very, very specifically. So this is a multiple choice question. You'll notice here, this is one of those jobbies where you got four choices and then you got to figure out which A, B, C, D, E choice is the best combination there. So you're looking for which of these are positive externalities. Try this on your paper and then check out the next video and I'll, I'll talk you through this, okay?